With that, we welcome you into Bird's Huddle, powered by PointsBet, along with Barrett Brooks, the future tattooed man. I am Taryn Hatcher, <laughs> his future tattooer. And uh, based on that last point on our playbook, Barrett, no underdog masks this year in Philly. It's the target on the back over here. No question. You know, you have a team right now that's supposed to be stacked. Everybody in the league is taking notice of what Harry Roseman and this team has done. So, hey, you're not sneaking up on anybody, no underdog masks or any of that. You got to come to play this year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they operate now that they're kind of the targeted ones. And that brings us to our three-point stance. Barrett's stance on three items of the day. Your first stance, the Eagles will have the most Productive backfield in the NFC East. Barrett, please elaborate. I'd love to hear it. And, and we're not talking about just, you know, Miles Sanders. And I know everybody's going to say, oh, well, Miles Sanders. At this point, this is why I'm saying this. Look at the other backs that are in the conference. Now, Antonio Gibson is a really good back, but I doubt if Washington really knows how to use him. But then you got to look at the Cowboys. Zeke Elliott, toast, done, finished. Now, that guy backing him up, Pollard, is very, very good. Saquon Barkley, I don't think he ever is going to get back from the way he was before he, he left Penn State. He was a beast his, his rookie year. But now, I mean, he's lost a step. They're not using him in the right capacity. I mean, he played almost, what, 80, 70, 80 percent of the snaps last year and still only had like 600, a little under 700 yards. So his pro productivity is down, and I don't even know who his backup is. I mean, as you look at it, McKissick is all right, like I said, with Gibson, but they don't run the ball enough or effectively with Washington. But, hey, I tell you what, Sanders and Gainwell, you got a nice mix of what you want. You got a Swiss Army nice, a knife and Kenneth Gainwell. You can put them out on the slot. You can put them in the backfield, have an H position. You can do all that. You have Boston Scott, the giant killer. He can come in and play efficiently. You look at uh, what you have in Miles Sanders. This guy here has a chip on his shoulder. He has a lot to prove. This is a contract year for him. So, of course, he's going to be mad, pissed off, ready to go out there and play, give his all, because he's interviewing for 31 other teams. Miles Sanders has a vendetta on, on, on any team that you put in front of him, and he's going to play it to a high level, a high capacity. I see him up there near 1,000 yards simply because he's trying to get the bag. He's going to get the money. So, yes, I see this backfield as being very productive because they have so many weapons that they can use, so many weapons that can be effective in what Nick Sirianni is trying to do. Sirianni wants to make sure he has multiple facets in the offensive um, um, game plan where they have guys in different positions, at wide receiver, in the backfield. I mean, you name it, they're going to try to do it just to create matchups against defenses. So, yes, that's why I say they're going to be productive. Like I said, Zeke, Cook. Saquon Barkley, Cook. I see those guys in the uh, Eagle Green playing very, very well this year. So the other guys are cooked. The Eagles could be cooking. You mentioned all of the birds. They currently have the nests. But do you think they keep just the three guys they have now? Any chance, any glimmer of a hope of a Jordan Howard reunion for a fourth time? You know what? I mean, that could be a possibility. He's always there. He hasn't been picked up. I don't know if he will get picked up. The rest of the league to kind of pass them by, but the Eagles have them in their back pocket. Uh, I know Brooks, the guy they got from Oklahoma this year, kind of the same size as uh, uh, Miles Sanders. I see him, them using him. If he can have a good camp, I see them using him in that capacity a little bit, you know. But at this point, Howard is always there if they need him. I know he's the consummate pro. He's going to make sure that he's in shape and ready to ball if they do want to bring him back. But I, do, I will say this, Miles Sanders learned a lot from him last year on how to tote the rock effectively. He used to want to bounce it outside. It wasn't until he saw Howard running between those tackles that he became more efficient as a runner. So, I mean, he did help those other guys a lot. But at this point, the young guys, I think, are going to take front and center and be that backfield that, we, uh, that I'm saying they're going to be this year. And by the way, so we haven't really touched on Brooks, the, the undrafted out of Oklahoma. He played with Jalen Hurts, and it seems to be the ah, offseason, ah. off our first ah, yes. ah, ah, of the day. I go. love it. It ah, seems ah, ah. to be the offseason of bringing in Hurts buddies. So we'll see how that one pans out as well. I'd like to segue into our second stance, though, uh, Barrett. And this one comes courtesy of Pro Football Focus's rankings of the best contracts in the NFL and it's Jordan Mailata who has the best contract in the league. I mean, this is somebody who transitioned from, from rugby to football. He did so effectively, and now he's doing so cost-effectively as well. No, he's reaping the benefits. Look at that, four years, $60 million. I mean, that's a great, great, great way for, for Howie Roseman to really get banged for his buck. He caught him at the right time. Jordan Mailata has been playing football four years, and he's got this type of contract. But the way he's going to play, 
he's going to play well above this contract. Usually the going rate of, of offensive tackles is right around $22, $23 million a year for a starting big-time tackle. And I see this guy as being one of the front and center, one of the best tackles in the NFL. He's big at six foot eight, 380 pounds. He moves, he cat quick. He's now getting that aggressive nature that you want from him. I remember the Saints game. He got all pissed off because, you know, at the defensive end for the Saints got a little rowdy with his quarterback. He went out there and started finishing him. He made it a vendetta to go out there and put him on his back every time he could. If he gets that type of attitude and with that size, strength, athleticism, he could really, really break some guys' hearts and, 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 and hurt them on the field. So, yes, they have a front-line offensive tackle, left tackle it, that is, and he is by far one of the better tackles in the league, and they got him for a little, like a little over 16 mil a year. I mean, they're stealing. Howie Roseman is stealing. That's a great job by him going out there and getting away. He's done it before. He got Zach Ertz like that. He got Lane Johnson like that. Brandon Brooks like that. He got a lot of guys that, um, you know, signed him early enough. Even Carson Wentz signed him early enough that he knew they were going to be stars, but he then signed him at a rate in which he got him well below the fair market value in the NFL. And, and off-field-wise, seems like a pretty decent character guy. And just the singing voice of an angel. Well, see, I, I, I got to stop him from that, though. You know, when you play off the tackle, you got to choke people. You, you can't, you can't, be can't singing? sing, no. Ain't no, oh, no, none of that. All right. Uh, that. You kind of touched on this a little bit, but just how much money do you think Howie saved by paying Mylotta, Dallas Goddard, Avante Maddox, Josh Sweat before they hit free agency, before their price had the ability? Kind well, of that's what high. it is. Fair market value is, like I said, top tackles are making $22, $23 million. Top um, tight ends, I mean, they're, they're above the roof. You know, they even got Goddard at a price with, you know, well below two or three million below what these guys like Kelsey and them are making at the tight end position. Now, I believe he's going to be a top five tight end. He has found a way to get these guys to sign contracts early before they hit that fair market value. And you know, at this point, it's through the roof. You know, so Howie Roseman has done a great job of being that GM that understands he's got to get in, sign them early with their potential being low. And then when it gets up to their highest, he, they're already under contract. Great job by him. All right, uh, we're going to go from a great job to maybe not so great job in our final stance. The Commanders are uh, going to be for sale soon. Their owner, Dan Snyder, is going to be subpoenaed by the House Oversight Committee. They'll be looking into wrongdoing within the organization. Barrett, we kind of talked about this the other, the other day. Outside of the Eagles, there's some hot mess expresses going on around the <laughs> right, NFC no East. Question, but no the question. Commanders, uh, they take the cake. No question. I mean, and then I look at my notes and um, – First thing I read in my notes, everybody hates him. Everybody <laughs> hates him, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I love him. I love the fact that he's not the owner of my team, the Philadelphia Eagles. But he is just a train wreck. And what he allowed in this organization is wrong. What he's doing still in this organization is wrong. He should go ahead and sell it, but I'm glad that he's not. And, you know, like I said, Goodell said, look, um, I can't do anything about this. I cannot make him sign, sell his team. I don't have the power. It would have to be the other owners to try to force him out. But, hey, that's not going to happen. We all know. He probably knows where a couple of the bodies are buried also. You know, he knows a lot of dirt about the other teams. So they're not going to do that. So he'll be there. But at the end of the day, if I was him, I'd go ahead and sell the team, pocket about five or six billion dollars that he can get for that franchise. It's a top, what is it, top eight franchise in the NFL. It's up there, you know, with the upper echelon of teams as far as money-making potential, franchise, storage franchise. He could get top dollar for that organization right now. The, you know, what, uh, the Broncos just got sold for five million. He could, no question, get six or seven million dollars for that franchise right now. But much to the chagrin of Washington Commander fans, seems like the Snyder, Let him stay. The Snyder will always linger, it seems. Yeah, I, I, I keep that turmoil down the turnpike. Let him stay there. You know what I'm saying? We'll keep the advantage going on here in Philadelphia with great management, great ownership. I'm good with my guys here. All right, he might be staying there, and we hope you'll stick around because we're joined by Jay Croucher from PointsBet on the other side. We've mentioned the difficulty or lack thereof when it comes to the Eagles schedule, but just wait until Jay reveals how many games the birds will be favored in. This is Birds Huddle powered by PointsBet.
It is time now for Storylines powered by PointsBet. New customers can get their first bets risk-free up to $2,000. And PointsBet is your home for live in-game betting. Download the app today. Enter code Philly to get in on the action. Welcome back to Bird's Huddle. Taryn Hatcher here with the one, the only, the Bear Brooks. And uh, we know the Eagles have been the most heavily bet on team to win the Super Bowl over on points bet. But now to give us some more, some deeper insight into those numbers, we're joined by Jay Croucher from points bet. Jay, thanks for uh, making time to join us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, breaking down the Eagles schedule. I am too, because it seems like you've you've come with some good news. We gave you some homework. We were wondering about the Eagles lines for all 17 games this season. And man, you delivered and perhaps the biggest shock. They're favored in 13 of the 17 games. Yeah, 13 out of 17. It's unbelievable. I had to do a double take as well. But look, it's just it's all about the divisions that they're playing. Firstly, they play within the NFC East. So you get games against the Giants and Washington. Neither expected to be playoff teams. And then you're playing against divisions like the NFC North and the AFC South. These are the divisions that you want to be playing. So the Eagles, if they are good enough, they really should have a path to double-digit wins. That is music to our ears. Barrett, how are you feeling about this? The Eagles have kind of taken on this persona of being the hunter for a long time. Now they're they're kind of the hunted. Well, yeah, you I mean you talk about a team that went out there and filled a lot of holes, you know, and they brought in a lot of players, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to really come in and and and, and take that defense to another level. So now Gannon has a lot to prove as a signal caller, you know, to really make that defense play up to expectations. Now all those expectations aligned with Jalen Hurts getting better and them going out and getting a weapon like A.J. Brown, those expectations are over the roof now. So now these guys got to go out there and produce. So I see why they're favored, but it's sometimes it's hard in being the big guy on the block. When you're the big brother, your little brothers are always trying to come take you down, man. They're always waiting for that growth spurt when they pass you and then they exactly. fight back. Uh, <laughs> Jay, were you surprised at all? The one thing that jumped out at me to see the Eagles favor against the Cowboys at home it's it's a one point line it it certainly jumped out at me what were your thoughts yeah that is an interesting one and look I think it just speaks to the fact that we think the Eagles are going to be a really good team this year you know with the additions that they made on defense you know particularly fortifying the secondary and with the draft that they had and then obviously you add AJ Brown to give Jalen Hurts that weapon and then really sliding Devonta Smith into the number two wide receiver spot which uh, at this stage of his career is that's where you really want him to have a great offense so look the Cowboys as well they might take a little bit of a step back their defense was phenomenal last year. I'm not sure it can be any better than it was last year. And then, you know, they lose a piece on offense and Amari Cooper. So the Cowboys still expect they'll be really good. And one thing to look at with these lines is that we think these days that home field advantage is worth two points. So when the Eagles are favored by one at home against Dallas, that means we think that Dallas are one point better than them, but it's really close. All right, the biggest spread is minus seven in week four against the Jags and the same number minus seven in week nine against the Texans. When you look at those two games specifically, is that more about the Eagles or, I mean, just how bad, quite frankly, you're projecting those teams to be, Jay? Yeah, I think it's more about how bad. Uh, we love ricochet you know, shots the on this Texans. show. We love a ricochet <laughs> yeah. shot. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Exactly. And look, I think when you look at particularly with the Jacksonville game, I think that speaks to something that's really important about the Eagles schedule, which is that they have a really good start to the year, you know, playing Detroit, home to Minnesota, Washington, Jacksonville. They really should be expecting to go at least three and one in that stretch. And, you know, with the new parts that they have on defense, with integrating A.J. Brown into the offense, I think it's a really good thing for the Eagles that they have perhaps a bit of a softer part of their schedule at the start of the season. All right, Jay, we thank you as always for your time and your insight and for coming with some good news at the top of this block. We really appreciate that. (laughs) No worries. Appreciate it, guys.